When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil. Matthew 21, verse 10. The whole city was in turmoil. As we mark Palm Sunday this year, it feels like the whole world is in turmoil, doesn't it? Not just the city of Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem certainly known its share of turmoil over the years. For us, almost everything that we thought was solid and reliable about our way of life has been stripped back and pulled away. We're getting right back to basics and finding out just what we took for granted. We're having to act with restraint, lay aside some of the freedoms we enjoyed, because as a world, we're all trying to act for the good of all. And sometimes we're afraid. I know I am. It's not just off balance, not just the threat of illness or the silent streets, not just the lack of human contact and touch. Everything feels different now and the future is completely unknown. And we just don't like it. Where is God in the midst of all this? What can the events of this Palm Sunday have to say to us here and now? Each year, as I think about this day, I wonder what it would have taken for people to grab branches off the trees and throw off their cloaks and follow Jesus in a public demonstration of loyalty. Have you ever been involved in a demonstration, a public demonstration? I've been on a few, a few marches. A few where we linked hands and asked the world to ask people to listen to us and try and break the, the chains and drop the debt. It was a little while ago now. And I suppose I've been to some pop concerts where I've demonstrated loyalty to Elton John or status quo. But this year I was reminded of, of Thursday evening. Were you on your doorstep making a noise? We stood out, I had my tambourine with me, my big tambourine, and I made a great big noise applauding the NHS workers. A different kind of demonstration of loyalty and appreciation. I wonder if one of the benefits of this time of turmoil is that we've rediscovered what is of value in the world. The people who day by day care after others. It's their job, but it's so much more than that. And thank goodness we've begun to appreciate that. It's so much more than that, day by day, even if there's not a virus that's causing this kind of turmoil to our world. And it's not just those who take care of our health. It's those who work to provide the other essentials of life. How much we appreciate water now while we're having to wash our hands day by day. So much more. I've got it down to a fine art now, the special way of making sure every single bit of your hand gets covered in soap. Where does all the soap come from? That's a question, isn't it? And then there's the food. Have you been queuing and queuing? Have you had trouble? Have you had to manage without some of your favourite things? We're grateful, aren't we, to those who are in the shops and those who are doing the deliveries. And our homes, as we look at what's happening around the world and some people who are finding it really difficult to social distance, how can they? Those who maybe haven't got a home to go to. Even though it feels like the four walls are closing in on us sometimes. We must be grateful for that shelter, for that safety of our homes. Valuing those things that really matter. Showing our appreciation for them. On that first Palm Sunday, people were carried away and wanted to pledge allegiance to someone they thought would help them. Someone whose true value couldn't be measured. 
they hailed Jesus as Messiah and shouted, Hosanna! Save us, we beseech you. Hosanna, that's what it means. Save us, we beseech you. They thought he was Messiah. And they had all sorts of ideas about what a Messiah would be. There's prophecies that say, a king meek and riding on a donkey. And there he was. But once they'd hailed him as Messiah, they had expectations that he would come to bring in a new world order, to save them from the Romans and other oppressors, to lead a red revolution. Jerusalem was in turmoil. Who is this man? And as this week unfolds, all those shouts of Hosanna and that sense that they were being loyal to Jesus will surely be put to the test, won't it? I wonder, just as they were looking for a Messiah who would save them, what sort of God are we calling out for in this term of time of turmoil? Do we secretly expect God to intervene and rescue the world in some amazing way? Or are we aware of God at work in the smallest acts of kindness, the daily miracles of food and drink and clean water in our taps, the beauty of spring bursting into life all around us? God is active. God is in our world. Even so, even then, underneath that, there's that anxiety, that uncertainty lurking. So maybe, like the psalmist, we cry to God, Why? Where are you? What now? The crowds cried Hosanna, not a shout of praise, but a cry for mercy. They were quoting a psalm. Psalm 118, a psalm that's used at the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's a feast that involves cutting down palm branches and building temporary shelters to live in for eight days. I think this feast might have something to say to us about Palm Sunday and something to say to us about the times we're living through now. The shelters are built and lived in to remind people of the wilderness wanderings for 40 years, when God had provided and guided them, when they were utterly reliant on God. Living in a temporary shelter is a stark reminder of how fragile life is, of what a gift it is from God. And for the Jews, of course, it's a celebration of God's faithfulness in those wilderness times. Hosanna, save us. We have faith and trust in you, loving God. So as the crowds acclaimed Jesus, their Messiah, and saw him riding meek and on a donkey, they saw in him one who would save them, lead them, one who was coming to bring in something new. They had faith and trust in him as God's chosen one. Like their ancestors wandering lost in the wilderness, utterly dependent on God's provision. They couldn't know what the future held, what it might mean to really follow Jesus. But they believed they could trust him, believe in him, hope in him. He was on their side, on the side of the ordinary person and he had utter faith and trust in his father God. Who will we trust and follow these days? What will we value and appreciate and be thankful for? Let us live day by day with faith and trust in Jesus who shows us that God is love, God is with us, God is faithful. Life is fragile and precious. We sometimes feel helpless and vulnerable. 
I wonder how Jesus felt riding into Jerusalem on that donkey. But we have a God who hears our cries of anxiety and distress. A God who cares. Hosanna, save us, we beseech you. We have faith and trust in you, loving God. Now let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Living God, alive and active, you come to us in Jesus to show us your way of love. We place our anxieties and uncertainties into your loving hands with trust in your faithfulness. We seek to be followers of your son Jesus. Guide us, we pray, day by day. Help us to truly appreciate and value all that is life-giving in our world. Amen. And now I'm going to hand over to Sally, who's going to tell us something about her week. <laughs> 